So when it comes to natural hair and haircuts, there is a lot of conversation, Carlene. But what right before we hit the record button, what did you say about haircuts? It's all about preference. There's no cookie cutter way. There is foundation. And once you know your foundation, you can kind of explore from there. Yes. But it's all about preference. It's all about preference. So let me say this. I think that because a lot of us naturals, let's be honest, think about the amount of time it's been for some of us, because this is not everybody, because our pandemic naturals, they was going to the salon. <laughs> the pandemic natural girls, they just like, well, what am I to do here? But right. the bullies that came before the pandemic natural, they are folks who've been at home exploring their own hair. And so they haven't been to the salon, haven't gotten a haircut. And here uh, all over the internet, there's like all these conversations about all these different hair cutting techniques. Let me say that again. Hair cutting techniques. Because it's a technique. That's it. It's a technique, right? So if you're here for the first time, welcome. My name is Aisha. I am the CEO and creative director behind Black Girl Curls. Our Carlene, I'm horrible at introducing people. So you, would you mind introducing yourself? <laughs> I'm Carlene of InStyle Hair Care, and I've been doing hair for over 25 years. So I've seen all the things that came and, came and went. You, you survived the 90s. I survived the 90s. When it was no Instagram, no anything. We had to like book a photo shoot, a photographer, the whole nine yards. So I appreciate social media. <laughs> and I, I always look back to the 90s because the 90s is when I was introduced to the hair salon. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with a stylist who definitely kept, because that was right at that tipping point between... Uh, that was at the tipping point of like relaxers and lots of molded hairdos. Yes. And I and I was weave. Weave. And I was I was pixie queen. I never did weave because I, okay. I, I don't know I don't know how to sew. Okay. And I don't know how to braid. So therefore <laughs> you was doing real hair. Strength. <laughs> you was doing real hair. I said we're gonna focus on our strength and we're gonna just be a hair cutter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you only do haircuts, Carlene. Like that was like your thing. That like was my you thing. All for haircuts. By the way, Carlene, Carlene is in New York, y'all. Just in case y'all were wondering, she is in New York. Okay, Let's so see. again, I think New York and Chicago definitely share, and Detroit and Atlanta probably yes. share the connection, or even DMV too. With yes, the DMV molded, definitely. The moldy hairdos. <laughs> Uh, and then, that, like I said, that was that period where the 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 weaves started coming into. Like that's yes. when the glue. We, and I was doing quick weaves. I was doing quick weaves. Okay. Because, okay. You know, short girls wanted to switch it up, so I was like, okay, for New Year's, we're gonna do this. We're gonna add here. We're gonna add there. So I did quick weaves. You did quick weaves. So, like, decided not to. Yes. Yeah. So now we have, like I said, all these naturals who have been at home. And listen, no shade to you guys who decided to go the DIY route because there was this idea that, uh, I mean, well, I guess it, it's not a false idea. It just wasn't a lot of stylists. Now, New York, different story. New York, I, yeah, I pivoted around 19, the late 90s to be active because a lot of people were, they were like, they were inquisitive about the silk press. Mm. At that time, you called it like, you know, flat iron press, right? You want to get your hair flat iron. And then all of a sudden, they were like, I want to try a silk press. And I'm like, it's just a flat iron press out. So, you know, at that time, they changed the name. Right. So everybody wanted to try it. And I was like, look, if you can survive the summertime, let's do it. And then after a while, I had an influx of girls transitioning. So and that's how I got into natural hair. So you've yeah. been working with people during that period. But again, New York, I think, is one of the epicenters are the epicenter of natural hair. So like everything. You think so? I think it was. I honestly okay. think it was. Because if you think about even, OK, if we use the 90s again and use living single as an example. Right. True. You had Regine was a wig girl. So we were going to say she was the wig weave girl. You had Maxine with her locks. And that was probably the first time we actually seen somebody on TV with locks that were polished. And I'm not saying other locks weren't polished, but I'm saying mm -hmm. locks made us look 
Like, there was a big market in New York for natural girls in a sense of short natural styles, or you would lock it, or you would get braids. Yes. That was the categories at the time. Yes. yes. Um, and so the, and then you had Khadijah, I mean, Queen Latifah, big ups to her. Like I've never seen her had a bad, a bad hair day. <laughs> no. From the color to the style. Beautiful. We got to give big ups to Queen Latifah's hairstylist, whoever those people have been over the years, because for decades, Queen Latifah has never missed. Never. <laughs> I just got to give it to her. No, really and truly. From truly. the ponytails to the bobs. I mean. Never. But yeah. then you had Sinclair who stayed in braids. Yeah. And then yeah. who else? Is that it? That's everybody, right? I covered it. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Sinclair, they're braids and wigs sometimes. Yeah. So you yeah. had that, right? And they were based in New York. So like in Chicago, that wasn't really, we didn't have a lot of people with locks. A lot of folks. Okay. So what was happening in Chicago during that time? During that time, uh, Living Single Days, definitely people had either a Halle Berry, Anita Baker, all right. Because, you know, that was the cut. They had that cut. They had a medium, you know, they had that that bob, that medium-ish bob. And then yeah. they or they had long hair, like the girl on the rap, you know, when raps came out. You remember? Yes. yes. Uh, yes. It was a long rap. Because that's what Janet Jackson, like, yeah. Yes. We, we, we call it doobie. <laughs> Understood. We just called it a rap because that's what we, like, you wrap your hair around, you wrapped it down and went about your day. Okay. Um, so you had, but you guys had that, like you said, you started moving away from relaxers into natural hair in the 90s that was not happening in chicago uh because i remember very vividly first of all i had very much a relaxer i was in high school though mm -hmm. I, you know grammar school high school and i wore a wrap like that's all i wore i might have got a friend at that time it was like five percent it wasn't much right it's, it's but there was no girl at my salon that was getting her just her regular hair done without a relaxer Got so it. like i think that that like again that's normalcy around natural hair is much easier or it's been easily embraced mm -hmm. in New York. Uh, and so then you have people, you know, starting to get into it, let's say the 2009, 2010. Now at that time, would you say, and I know y'all like, which y'all supposed to be talking about haircuts, but I, it's going to be a connection. So stick with us. <laughs> so there. 2009, 2010, do you feel like you saw more people coming in who were not relaxed, like more. No, they were more so transitioning. Mm. So you had girls half and half. And I always told my client, it's always easy there. But when it gets 60, when it starts getting 60, 40, 60% 60 natural, that's when the real struggle starts. And that's when you really have to make a decision. Do you want to stay here or do you want to exit? And, what, and was, was, what was happening there? Like, what were they doing? My gauge was the summer. If you can survive the summer and our summers are very humid. They are. Then you're, then you're good. So not everybody survived, but most <laughs> did. And that's when a lot of stylists were like, I don't do that. So go to Carlene. I don't do that. Go to Carlene. I don't do that. And then their friends started coming. I was like, I don't know how to do this, but I embraced it and I did it. And, that, and that's how I got to you guys because <laughs> I, I was all silk presses. It was like 80% silk press and 20% relaxers, right? But then what do we do in the summertime? They were, were like, I want to do a wash and go. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you like, <laughs> and then I was doing it. And I was like, I can't even charge you for this girl. This girl. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, girl, just going on, on this on the house. Take on the house. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> Did you ever like go over to YouTube and like, let me see what this wash and go is? I'm, I'm a firm believer of no YouTube because I'm like, it's the loss. Got in the loss because I'm a stylist. I'm sure there's a stylist out here. And I used to work for Mazzani as an educator. That's when I got no Ronnie. Yeah. So I, I called Ronnie and was like, look, see, you? from your suggestion, who should I go to to learn wash and go? And she was like, who is your primarily your clients? I was like, Latinas and black girls. And she was like, I got some sisters for you. <laughs> and I was like, oh boy. So I watched, I did, I, I purchased the 30 day. Hair detox. Yes. And everything you guys were saying, I've been saying for years. And I was like, oh, love these ladies. And then I took the course and I still didn't get it until I went to Chicago. And I was like, oh, ding, ding, ding. and it was amazing going to Chicago because every girl that walked down to that door, I'm like, so you gonna make her curly. You <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh. Hey. Not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not impressed. 
that's very much like that. First of all, that's like very <laughs> Chicago energy. Like if mm -hmm. I in New York, you like, I'm going to take you to the best pizza spot. And he's like, we'll see. Best pizza spot. We'll see. Mm -hmm. we'll see. And right. then I'm, then you're going to take me. I'm going to be like, it's all right. It's mm -hmm. all right. I mean, and it was challenging because, you know, everybody's like, are you so pressed? I'm like, no, I'm relaxed. So I'm the relaxed girl. <laughs> 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 Which honestly doesn't even, it's not even a big deal anymore because Some people, no, but it, at the time it was like a big deal. I remember going to Natural Hair Show in Atlanta and they were like, So you're slow press? And I'm like, No. <laughs> <laughs> but I do natural hair. I mean, I love natural hair. So you had all these clients, you were cut, like they were wearing, they were wearing silk presses mostly. And then by the time that summer rolled around, that's when they wanted to go into wash and goes. Um, and so you did your best with that. But when you were cutting their hair, you were just cutting their hair, just using your foundational, like cutting education. Yes. And it fell in both ways. I would see them would do a curly cut or a twist out. And I'm like, ooh, looks good. Okay. okay. And so it transitioned well. So, but, but I, I learned so much from I Am Black Girl Curls as far as things I wasn't doing that I improved so much on with the natural girls, like the tapers. I wasn't sure how to quite execute the tapers. And some people just didn't want heat and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I was like, you got to blow it. And like, I don't want to. And I understand the trauma because sometimes you went somewhere and you had like total heat damage. So I get it. And I don't fault them and I don't judge them. I just give them options. And so when you guys were doing the, the curly cuts, it, it took me a minute to get it because I mean, I was do blow drying for so long that you kind of lose your way, but then you get it eventually. Cause it's the same thing. We're stretching so that we can, so it's in the blow dried state, but not all the way. Get what I'm saying? And then, the taper is the same thing as haircut. So it was a it was a matter of understanding it's all foundational, it's just the technique is different. And seeing the hair. So for as as a consumer, right? They come in, the consumer comes in and they're like, okay, so we because we have multiple, there's multiple profiles for whom we work with. So like whoever comes sit in a chair, right? Um mm -hmm. What I love about where you sit is one, you've been in the industry a while, you've taken tons of cutting classes because anybody who really cuts for real has taken a lot of classes. A lot me. of money. It's a, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> a lot of money I spent on this. If I told you. <laughs> you would be like, oh, okay, I understand why your cuts cost this much money. Right. Um, and this is not the basis of this conversation, but um understanding like things like you said like you get a client who comes in who wears their hair natural and natural can be curly or twist out and that's that's very important i'm happy you said that because there is a difference there is totally a difference and with that you have that same client who's like i'm a twist out and i'm a wash and go girl and sometimes Okay. Well, now we ain't gonna put, we ain't gonna throw her in there. Don't, don't do it. Not, not no, I don't, I'm gonna do this for the <laughs> So you have your natural who who wears primarily probably twist outs because that's how, how a lot of people start, and sometimes wears a wash and go, and then have oh, and now also I don't want you to use any heat on my hair to cut it. And so this is where this part of where this curly hair cutting uh, option comes into place because. You could possibly cut somebody who wears both twist outs and wash and goes using the techniques you have learned from taking. Because I know you're taking more than one curl cutting, like curly cut. I, I, did, I did curly hair artistry and I did um, Rizzo. So you have multiple classes under your belt. So you're using multiple techniques to approach the hair that is sitting in your chair, which yes. means it's not necessarily that you're doing a curly cut. You're doing a cut to address the wants, needs, and desires of the individual who's sitting in your chair. Yes. And it's hard to explain that client. So that's why the first time clients, I just appease them and I do what you'd like. And then I educate you because most of my clients can go out there and start their own YouTubes because my philosophy is I'm not here to keep you for, for long. My goal is to teach you to do how to do your hair. And I did my job. And I'll take somebody else. So when one door shuts, another one opens. I do not gatekeep my clients. I just yes. want to teach them how to do hair because in turn, they're teaching their aunts, they're teaching their, their friends. They are. And then now people are educated and then they wear their hair. Absolutely. So yeah. that first time client, 
I feel like as a first time client, like it's it's really important for them to be really clear about what they want. I think we spend so much time on what we don't want that we can't even get into the things that we that sometimes we they don't know what they want. Oh, and there's there's what they want and what they have. Yes, and first you have to tackle that because I'm I'm a believer that if you have to wear, so I look at the person I'm like show me the pictures that you have. I'm like her texture does not match yours. I suggest you follow people that have your texture for a month. Get used to seeing that. Yes, and then. We can talk about here because then you're in a glue land, I feel. And it's no offense to anybody out there, but you have to look at somebody that matches your texture or you're going to be a little delusional because her hair is not going to fall like your hair is going to fall. You'll have the same style, two different looks. Two different totally. looks. <laughs> totally. I'm going to tell you a story. So years ago when I first, um, when me and Elise first like joined forces, uh, she cut my hair initially and she didn't, you know, she doesn't, didn't, she doesn't and didn't live in Chicago. So I needed another haircut. So I went to a different stylist. And so I have found this picture of this uh, young lady who lives in the UK. Her name is Nia. Mm -hmm. All of our sing, dings and sounds. So excuse us. <laughs> <laughs> Real life, y'all. So uh, Nia the Light, that's, that's the name she goes by now. Um, mm -hmm just in her salon actually a week ago um, teaching a class and she had this haircut where her hair went like bop, bop, bop. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it had this and then that. I wanted that, okay? But let me let me tell you, Nia's hair is very silky. She's got some coarseness. She probably has maybe a little bit more half like one and a half times more hair or half the times more hair than i have wow and she has a lot of hair but it looks very you know when you wet it like down to, tell. down on noodles and uh her her hair is more of a botticelli curl like a ringlets got it i did not at the time have a good understanding of my hair being wavy because I just probably for like, I don't know, maybe at that point, seven or eight months have been wearing my hair in a wash and go. And it did not connect that my hair was wavy and her hair is more like ringlets and ringlets. And loose ringlets. Because there's loose ringlets and tight ringlets. Yes. So loose <laughs> ringlets, right? And mm -hmm. my hair is wavy. That hair does not lay or live in the same place so wow. even if i got this and i did get this haircut guess what happened when i got that haircut i tried please tell us. <laughs> tell us i lost a lot of length in my crown i also lost some length around my shoulders and it didn't look the same correct did not remotely look the although same. it's the same haircut it's the same haircut same haircut it did not look the same at all. And I had the biggest epiphany uh, at the time. Now, the stylist I went to, she understood like, oh, you work with Elise. She didn't explain a whole lot to me. And I'm not faulting her for that at all. She did make an assumption like I knew some stuff that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I think haircuts are experiences. I don't care what kind of cut. I really think curly cuts are the biggest experience of all. Yes. <laughs> Man. <laughs> they're big experiences, but um, I had that haircut. And but my hair being wavy, I'm gonna tell y'all something about wavy hair. Wavy hair almost lays straight, very kind of two dimensional lish. Um, wavy hair almost lives like straight Asian hair. Am I wrong in in that? Like in that parallel? Yes. It literally like it takes. In order to get like a lift, like people want that kind of lift, it's going to require a loss of length. And that yes. is something that clients, you guys, are not interested in doing. But then you want the look. And I'm just like, it's, <laughs> and it takes some time, but we get there because that was the issue around 2020 when they all came running after the pandemic. Everybody wanted to shape, but nobody wanted to lose length. And there's no way. No there's, way. 
There's no way. Now, I mean, I'm learning that there's some things that you can do, but it's some things we just can't get away from. You yeah. know, what I mean? now, um, especially when they're like not used to a haircut. And what it, what really is length is the ends because the ends don't curl anymore, so it's stretching, and they don't get that. And then when they actually see their healthy hair, it's going it's springing back up. Yeah. And I'm like, that's your hair being healthy. Yes. <laughs> What was dangling was the strings Listen. that were non-existent that had to come on. Listen. But they're so attached to Lynch. And that's a whole nother history lesson, right? Another, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Be because I, 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 I really want to tackle that in young girls because I'm seeing a lot of young girls don't love their hair and they can't even look at themselves in the mirror. Wow. When I have, in, when, I have when they really want to tackle their natural hair and they really have to be ready, it's hard. I can I can definitely see that um, mm -hmm. just because we are inundated with so many visuals and then the visuals that do show up, we cannot accept those visuals. I get a lot of flack for my hair. Um, well, I mean, I get a lot of love, but there's also some flack that I get. Like somebody just literally typed yesterday. I commented on another hairstylist post and the person's like, I don't know why you laugh and your hair is damaged. And it's like, <laughs> but then to see your to see your hair in a natural state and understand natural hair versus what you've known all your all your life with relaxed hair, it's a whole learning curve. It's a whole because some people want shine, and I'm like, you're never gonna get that shine. It was because it was straight. So, and then you gotta break it down scientifically how the light shines, and now it's not because it's in a natural state, you know. And then yeah. they're like, what? And I'm like, oil ain't gonna help you. It's not, oh, it's not, not gonna gonna so then, the, well, this is what we touched on a lot in the conversation with the psychotherapist C about being able to make that your brain to make that adjustment to what your eyes are actually seeing. Um, and it takes a lot of time because we, we are dealing with so much um, when it comes to our hair, because it's so political, then we're like, it's political, it's social, it's economic. And then people are fighting about stuff and not taking the time to really like decide for themselves, like what do they want for them? Which is why this whole conversation around haircuts is actually really important because you don't have to get your hair cut in a curly cut. You, you no. don't have to do that. Um, that's an option that is available to those who wear their hair curly 90% of the time. You don't, because it's like, oh, they're a waste of money for you. It's okay. Yes. You don't have to get your hair cut that way. I have some clients um, that I actually blow out and cut. But these mm -hmm. are like twist girls. They wear twists or bantu knots. And I just did one on a client recently because we have been kind of doing her hair cut and curly. And I was like, nah, we about to blow this out. I'm about to cut it. And the, the funny thing about that, doing that haircut, it's a haircut. I, the technique I use for cutting her hair, because I also, when we're cutting, we have to think, especially for you twist out girls, one, y'all need that back part because y'all like that length on the back. So we got to yes. keep the length part, that little long piece. So it's, so it's mulletish. Yes. So it's going to be a mullet-ish haircut, but it falls really nicely when we get here, like in the crown area, mm -hmm. uh, when we cut it stretched and stretch doesn't even mean press. We literally, I'm literally blowing out and cutting from the blowout. Is that what you do too, Carlene? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And that's how I cut hair, period. All my life. Mm -hmm. That's how I've learned how to cut hair. And there was no right or wrong because I've seen... I remember Karj at one time, he was the one blowing white hair out um, and people were like, oh my God, he's damaging it. And he wasn't, it's just a different technique that people mm -hmm. weren't used to. Yeah, it is. That's it's, as long as you got the foundation down, you can do whatever you'd like. Do whatever but, and you like. But people get caught up in a technique as opposed to it's a way to get this look. But there are many ways to get this look. It's just it's that's not that ways. person is going about it and they made it their technique doesn't make the other person's wrong yes right so i would say this so things to keep in mind for uh for haircuts so if you're a twist out girl blowout cut for you 
just get a blowout cut. Don't silk press it. Literally have somebody blow it out and cut it. I always tell people to do either zero, like no elevation, or do long layers, meaning this the stacking will happen at a longer pace. So like if your hair is here, the stack will be like bap, 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 and it wouldn't go above that. So I hardly do layers for really stop girls are natural. If really? we do layers, it's always gonna be at a 45. Always. It's hard to get a 90, especially in the middle part. They don't know you're creating hell. They don't know what the 45 or 90 is. That's so, why I said the, the long keep it. Okay, so that's a 45 means that you're getting long layers. The layers hang low and yep. you're not losing length here. And that's yes. very important for natural growth because this is the tightest part usually. So you really have to keep that in mind and go long layers for natural girls. And it happens a lot too when they go get haircuts, get the straight, when they get a haircut with somebody who presses them, they end up with that, that 90 and then it's super disconnected from everything else. And usually they're like, my hair's falling out. I'm like, no, it's not falling out. Your hair's just tight. And then when I blow it out, they're like, oh, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. It's just in the way. And, and, that, and that's when I go to educating them. Like if you want to wear your hair natural, that's why we have to get a natural cut. That way we can see. We can see that, it how much your hair stretches and where because yeah. everybody's is not going to stretch or be tight where you think it's going to be everyone's different and that's why we hate the curl pattern the curl chart because everyone's curl pattern is different throughout the entire head the entire head which is why the other part of this right so you choose to get a haircut say you get a the i'll say this the blown out cuts actually help us to see how the hair lives, even if it is not curly, if that makes any sense. I'm going to try to put some, I don't know. And it also helps us see the ends because when you silk it, you don't really see it. And now we're giving you a Lulu cut, I call, because then you're going to come back and we're going to be like, we have more ends. You're like, well, you cut it before. That's because we didn't see it because we melded it with the flat iron. Whereas when it's blown out, and people didn't, I remember being at other salons, they didn't understand why I did that. I'm like, I can see everything when it's blown out, as opposed to me silking her and now having to give her a trim every time she comes. That way we nip it in the bud one time and I'll see in three months because we can see everything. And I don't blow it too hard either because I want to see the ends. I want to see, I wanna see like it. you said, how the hair lives. And it's most bushiest state because I always say it looks bu like those those bushy ends and listen the other part too in terms of like curly cuts one of the challenges when we are cutting uh on the curly hair and then y'all decide to go get it blown out and then um you go to a hairdresser who does not uh who has not had any formal training um in 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 curly cutting as to why the stylist did not cut what they feel like should have been cut part of it is as carlene has already stated is that there are multiple curl patterns grouped together and so sometimes they're right next to each other you might have a tight curl and a medium curl or wave sitting right next to each other and when you stretch it out they look completely different so they look like you know, high water pants on one side mm -hmm. and ankle at the other um, because the curls are actually different. The other thing that puts that into play is that when we cut on, cut your hair curly, you all are only comfortable with cutting so much of the hair. And so we're like, OK, and sometimes I'm going to say this. Sometimes uh, there are some stylists that may not explain well or they did. And it was so much information for you at that one appointment that you might have missed that they did discuss. Like, OK, here's what I'm, I want to cut here, but you're comfortable with here. So but there, there's the problem with that. You go another stylist. And they're going to like, what, did, what happened? And then they're not knowing we have a plan. So I stopped these plans, so to speak. I'm like, either you're going to come with me to the promised land or not. Because okay. I don't know if you're loyal to me yet. So until I know you're loyal to me, we can do these plans. Otherwise, we just got to start from scratch. Because you'll go somewhere and they'll be like, what's going on? And I've seen clients come to me where I'm like, this, this stylist probably was working with you as far as taking it step by step. Because I'm like, your hair is not good. And I have this test that I do with my clients. I was like, if we can see through it, it has to go. So mm -hmm. I'm bringing the hair up. And I'm like, you see here? Mm -hmm. It's not serving you. You see where it's strong? 
that's that's where your hair is. And then eventually they'll see it. If, if they don't want to cut, I'm like, it's up to you. But I'm going to tell you, the style's not going to last long. So I'm going to start frizzing within day two. And then you're going to be frustrated why your friend's hair can last and why yours don't last. And eventually they get in there like, and I know I've made it with my clients when they're like, I need a trim. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so that, I love that. I love that you like pulled it back. I was like, listen, we either doing this or we're not doing this. And because, yeah, the stair step method could, you know, it can, it can, I won't say it, it's a backfire. It's just one of those things that happens. And then it creates this conversation um, in our, and professionally, it, it creates. It never works, at least, Alicia. Aisha. Aisha. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I know who they are, y'all. I, I know, know. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm not offended. I now, I now tell the clients, we're not going to, we're not going to work well together. And I let them leave. Because what ends up happening is I see them in three months, they forgot about the plan and we're back to square one and we're having this conversation over and over again. And we're not getting anywhere. You're getting upset with me. I'm getting frustrated with you. It's not a good thing. Okay, so you're like, either you ready or not. So listen, this for 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 y'all as future clients, this is just something you need to know about the hairstylist that you want to you know partner with, uh, where they are with things. Because I definitely was, I very much was like that during like when we came back after the pandemic. Ain't no plans. I don't know if I'm gonna be here and <laughs> the next time you need a haircut because we could get shut down again. So I was like, you better right. get your haircut today uh, because I don't want you sitting at home thinking about like, I think I want a pixie now because the, everybody that came back after the pandemic was just mm -hmm. like wanting all these drastic haircuts and they just yes. needed to be cleaned up. And yes. when I, about that, I was like, oh, okay, I'm actually cool here. I don't want that taper that I came in on earlier. Um, and so that's where it resides. I literally just had a conversation with someone in our private See Some Crows community. And she was talking about how like, it was something about like whatever it was, she has a three tier cake. And I don't know okay. if you know what a three. So the three tier cake is the hair where it's short here. Um, it's oh, like, it's a hair. Style. Like it. So it's, she has a baby crown. OK, it's disconnected here. And yeah. then he has that long part. So nothing connects. That's yes. what it is. Three tier cakes don't connect. We no. see bop, bop, bop. And so she was afraid to cut because what really needs to happen when you have that baby crown is we need to get as close, if not meet it, as possible, because all we have is like chaos going on for months until something connects. And hardly, I'm going to tell y'all something. And it, listen, y'all can sit with it. Um, y'all can write me nasty messages underneath here. But there's a good majority of clients that we work with who really need a taper. They sure I, do. I, and I'm they just, don't. And sometimes they walk out and I'm like, we're going to get there. We're going to get, because, or I show them in the mirror. I'm like, it just needs some movement. It just needs, it's not telling a story. It's just here. It's just it's laying there. No, and it needs to tell a story. It needs it, to move. Needs and, then to you're, and then you're bringing me pictures of girls of hair that is, their hair is moving. It tells a story. And yours is not because you're scared of the length. You scare right? of the length. I don't listen. Or I, losing length. Right. Losing length or having short hair. Like I think it's just the having short hair because oh, I always had long hair or I've never because had because I've always and what annoys me with clients that you know I have hair. I'm like, I I know you have hair. Anybody who's natural I have three times the amount that you see. You don't have to prove it to me. I'm a hairstylist. It's just they feel the need to walk around saying, see, I have hair. I, I just want to let that go. You have hair, you know that. That's good enough for everybody. You don't have to walk around telling people I have hair. There's no power in that. None. There's a I think what has happened too is people have prioritized length over looks. Yes. Like look, I don't know like and I didn't even go to the hair salon a lot, but when I started getting older and had more, you know, ideas about how I wanted my hair to look, mm -hmm. I started wanting my like haircut a certain way. I, Cause I wore a wrap. It was always pretty much what I have right now is what my hair mm -hmm. looked like when it was relaxed. I okay. have this, this is a natural version of the relaxed hair, <laughs> which I think okay. is so funny to me because my hair literally, I mean, it was right around my shoulders or a little bit beyond my shoulders, but it pretty much was part hair gone on. And when I started getting my hair cut into bobs, 
that's when the game changed for me because I was like, oh, this a look. I started going to Walgreens and mm-hmm. buying magazines, white, white European magazines. Like I found this magazine from the UK. The haircuts in that magazine used to go so hard. I was like, yep, definitely this. I will come back to the salon with this white lady picture like this. And my stylist could cut it. it it's so funny. That's what I used to tell girls to bring in. Don't bring in no, um, because I can't see the cut. It's curled. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Bring the European cuts because I can see the cut. I can see where they went. I can, and then if your hair's relaxed, we're pretty much doing the same thing, right? Same thing. It's two dimensional hair, so it wasn't. Yes. It wasn't that was easy for people to go in and take the face away because we wasn't even looking at them ladies. We was looking no, at we were hair. looking at hair. Now this part where we are natural, we not only are looking at these ladies' faces because that's something that is also inspiring the choice for how we cut it or how we get the haircut shaped. Because mm-hmm. I still say shaping is something you do on straight hair as well. But how you would get it shaped. Um, but y'all are looking at their curls too. And so, and you need to, because in order to understand where, like what's possible for you, it needs to be on hair that is similar to yours. I can go on a uh, tons of hairstylist pages. In fact, I know right now what's trending is I'll, I see a lot of photos coming through of, again, people with, those looser silky curls and people are wanting their haircut just like that but we don't we don't have the same we're not working with the same foundations Um, right we can give you the cut it's just not gonna look the same it's not gonna look and it's not gonna fall the same it's not gonna fall the same can't style it the same um it's so many things some clients are so disappointed i'm like you you have the same cut. It's the same look. It's just not falling down the way you want it to because your hair goes up and out. Before it falls down, I'm going to need 10 times that length. And then it's going to, because we're going to need, the heaviness is going to make, it's going to weigh down to where it's going to come down. But right now your hair is living here in space. So we have to wait for it to come down. I, and I, also, I, you, you have to explain that with tapers and how to grow that out. Yeah. they want to grow it out at the, at the same time. I'm like, no. The back is closest here, right? So it's going to grow fast. And you're going to think it's shorter, but it's not. It's the same length. But we have to keep it neat while the top grows. And then it grows in stages. And then we keep tapering until we're here. Yes. And, and that's the part they don't get. And I'm like, but that's what's going to make you happy because now you, your hair's in a style. But if you just grow it all out at once, that's where the frustration lies. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to hate your hair because it doesn't have a shape. And that's how, why shape is important. It needs to look cute while it's growing out. I always I mean, friend, so I always use like a triangle, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wherever the point meets, I'm like, so this is where your hair is meeting in this taper. And so basically mm-hmm. what's going to happen is this triangle is going to keep moving down. And yes. once it gets here, right here in this corner, once the triangle gets here in this corner, that's where we start leaving that back part along. And then now we can go from here where the triangle meets out from there. Right. Right. But now we have a new challenge because now we have this crown area that can be tricky where it, it depending on how your hair curls, it may like look like a dog licked you in the back because that's what happens to me a lot. <laughs> it may start looking like that. Or, and so then we have to cut more in the crown area to get more lift. And don't let you be dense, right? Because the Ooh. minute you take that middle section where we are the densest for us dense folks out here, because yeah. our density l- lies up in here, this whole section here uh, from this side over will mm-hmm. disturb the whole entire shape. Yes. <laughs> and it's a delicate balance. Totally disturb it. Totally disturb it, right? Again, yeah. I know we're supposed to be talking about the choosing haircuts or choosing how to get your hair cut, but this also aligns with this conversation. So I don't want y'all to think that like we, like y'all didn't talk about the haircuts though. So when it comes down to like, say for instance, like you're a girly who wears curly hair, you wear twist outs, and sometimes you blow dry. Carlene, if I was that client, what what kind of, what, what, how are we getting this haircut? Are we doing a curly? Are we doing a curly? Blow dry. First I tell you, first I ask, how do you primarily wear your hair? Mm-hmm. Is it primarily natural or is it twist out? And they're like, if you say like, I do both, we're just blowing it out. Unless you're wearing your hair 90% to 100% natural, we're going to blow it out. 
It's just simpler. You can do more with it. All the looks look good on you. You may be a little mullety when you do the natural hair, but you're able to rock all styles and look cute. And because I'll, I had one client, I'm sorry, to, I had one client, she went to one of those curly styling, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name a salon. And she came back and she was like, I did my silk press and it's awful. I said, it's not awful. They just cut your hair for your curls where you wear your hair half and half. So I'll come and I'll cut it for where you can wear your hair still pressed, but they didn't do anything wrong. It's just that they cut their hair for curls and you're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. And that's okay. So and that's I, fine. That, that is fine. So honestly, to be to completely honest with you, because I always get like, oh, there's nobody who cuts curls in my city. Like you guys could really, two things, two things. I have two suggestions for y'all. One, y'all could go to a beauty school. Go to a beauty school and let the beauty school students cut your hair. Uh, blow it out with the with the with the with the with the um with the help of an instructor. But you, yeah, you go to a beauty school. This is just this is just a suggestion. Or you could find a hairstylist who does silk presses. That which means that they do blowouts and ask or request for a. Actually, I would say that any silk press stylist does blown out cuts. I would almost. Yeah. I, would, I would almost think that's a no-brainer. You can yeah. ask a request for that. Look on their menu and see if that's something they offer. Look at, to see if that stylist actually does braid prep because that'll actually help you out a lot because anybody who does braid prep is cutting that hair before they do those braids. They are yeah. they clean it up before those braids. So you can get a haircut from somebody. So you're not relegated to um, you know, waiting for somebody to take a curly cutting class in your city. Now, will it do exactly what you wanted to do? I think you should be fine. And I think this is where hairstyling comes into play. Using a diffuser, using the dryer without the um with or actually using the dryer with the concentrator attachment, scrunching things up, applying a gel and a foam in a certain way to get a look that makes the hair look good. We are not like at a deficit out here, honestly, when it comes down to to that. Um, I because I, I feel like it's just like, oh, there's nobody who cuts curly in my ear. It's okay. As long as they can cut, you're all right. Just like when my clients go away and they're going uh, to international, I'm like, just blow your hair out as straight as you can, silk it out, and go to somebody that can cut it. And be, you'll be all right. Just don't go with it natural. Silk don't it out as best you can. They'll give you a nice cut. Okay. And that's worked for them. Hmm? That's worked for them. That's that's worked for them because they'll get a, they'll, you'll get a decent cut. But you can't go in there natural because they're not going to know how to handle it if you're not used to textured hair or highly textured hair. You'll That's be intimidated and you'll be like, we're just going to do something and get her out of my chair real quick. But if you are already there and say, I just want to cut, at least you'll know. They'll know how to maneuver through your hair and give you a cut. Okay, I way. think that's really like great <laughs> advice, Carleen, because I just think that it was like we took away the relaxer and it all went to hell. Yeah. And it didn't really <laughs> go to hell. We just didn't or I wouldn't say didn't, we don't know how to approach it. Um, I think so. I think, you know, at, at one point we kind of did the natural people wrong by not having information. Because at one time I remember I was, I didn't wet the hair down. I dried the hair and I was detangling. <laughs> Ooh, those clients talk about you, honey. And that one Ooh. time. <laughs> well, we were there, we were there all day. And all I needed was water. Like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> but I was, I was patting the hair dry. You know things we, that we do, what we had to learn. So. No, I. But I love, I love that you went through that trans, like that transformation. Just didn't happen with your clients, but it also happened for you, like within your career. Um, and as hairstylists too, like we have to stay like in the loop, even when we don't necessarily. Uh, like I want, I want to say a line because I think if y'all, if more hairstylists even took look and learns, they will find that they actually align with some of the things that are being taught in this class, like in the classes that are are centering curly hair. I agree with I agree with you. I I just think you should just go to classes. Period. Because if I take if I have one takeaway from a hair show, I've won. You can apply that, and your job will be much easier. I remember going to a hair show. 
at um, Orlando. And one little tip she gave about blow drying blew my slow presses away. Every time I go to hair show, I always get like one piece of information I'm just so ecstatic about. And I felt that it was worth the money because yeah, it's the same thing over and over again, but things are always changing and you can always improve. They you know? are. I mean, to say nothing's changed, right? Because now I always tell people like, you know, the K-18 is probably the most like game changing brand in our industry right now. I mean, what mm -hmm. they have done in a short amount of time, they actually have been on the scene, right? Mm -hmm. um, but which tells me what? There are things progressing um, in the space. Um, yes. how things are being approached. Um, if anything, you guys take away from this conversation is one, we're all still learning. I don't know everything. Carlene didn't say she knew everything either. Um, and the wonderful thing is uh, Carlene took the time to like explore this whole thing with our clients. So while she's there exploring, she's exploring with them and also exploring professionally, because if we didn't open up to like what is taking place trend wise with hair, we would be, well, some of us are still going to be behind. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, we're not embracing, or I wouldn't even say embracing. We're not immersing. Correct. And some people are like, you know, it's a lot of money, but I just think, there's no amount of money for education. I mean, you always make it back. You always make it back. And um, I love teaching my clients and it excites me. Like me, I was kind of bored in the hair space until I started doing natural hair. Cause I'm like, I didn't realize how many people were informed, including myself. And so now I want to really teach people like anything can be easy once you understand and you're educated about it. And that way it'll motivate you to wear your hair and, and no bashing to the wigs, the wigs are great. It's a switch up. You can. I love the locks. I love the boho braids. But to live in them and not know what your hair looks underneath, that's an issue for me. Mm -hmm. And that's an issue where you don't love how you look when you take them off. Mm -hmm. and, well, again, and adjustment. You got to make that adjustment between your brain and your eyes um, to see that. So yes. haircuts, y'all, are a personal choice. They are, you know, decided based on like how you want to look but i will say like get get more comfortable with what you want what you have right now and what needs to be done to get you to the space um that you're trying to go because yes some of these haircuts we'd be like oh i just wish you would let me x y and z and um, don't be afraid of losing length i mean it's gonna come back it's gonna grow that much quicker because you're leaving it alone. I find when your hair doesn't have sh shape, there's so much manipulation going on. Oh my God. You're doubling, like you have ends and then you have ends more of that because you're just in your hair 24 seven. But when you have a shape, you leave it alone because even when it's not even looking good, you're getting compliments. You're like, my hair looks good. Yeah, because they can, it's telling a story. They're like, ooh, I see your hair. I see what it's trying to say. But if it's not in a shape, you're twisting it here to make it look like something all the time. You're doing a ponytail, you're sticking pins in there. Now your hair's dry. Now it's brittle because you're always in it. And then it takes a while for them to see it, but when they see it, they got it. So don't be afraid of losing length. Just get into the shape so that you can be happy and you can start loving your hair from there. I love what you said about the manipulation because the minute you start manipulating, meaning like you keep doing this, right? Because you want it to lift up. So in order for this to lift up, I cut it. short hair, I cut it. short hair. Pushes but, long hair. I, it, Alisa said that so many times and it took me, I don't know how long, just like it took me how long to get porosity, right? Because I feel like porosity, people think they understand the concept of porosity. It's not as cut and dry as the internet makes it when you're actually working with hair and you're like, wait a minute, this is doing what? But short hair, so shorter hair, like having hair shorter underneath, pushes the hair, the longer hair up. So you're wanting the hair to do this, but in order for that hair to do this, this hair- It's like a short haircut. Like if I want a client likes to hear her hair spiky, I have to go in there and create little shifts in there so that it can stand up on its own or else it's always gonna come down. It's just a matter of, that, that's just hair. Short hair is a principle, a mm -hmm. hair principle that Tell works you. any which way.
that's a hard one for people to understand because like, well, I want my hair and you can, right? There is a way for you to still get that lift. Part of it, though, comes down to the texture, which is the size of your actual strand mm -hmm. and your density are mm -hmm. going to be key in that because I can actually have my hair touch my shoulders and then right above this, we can wedge it. And now I got some short hair pushing long hair above, but I also still have hair here touching my shoulders. But and your that, density is enough for it to do that. Density is there to do it. And so knowing like that, and then we find too, I know I find a lot when we get back here in this crown, like this little area back here, for whatever reason, that it's always disconnected. <laughs> here. Like as much as we try to connect, it's always a challenge. So understanding, uh, again, understanding what's the unique aspects of your hair. But I think most importantly is partnering with a hairstylist who aligns with what your goals are. Um, somebody who truly understands uh, whatever it is that you want, whatever you prioritize. Like I prioritize color and haircuts and the stylist I work with, Sunny, y'all know Sunny do my hair. Mm -hmm. um, she she still presses and she also does curly cuts. So either way, I'm I'm good. If, you know, if I decide one day, you know what, I'm tired of being curly, put me on the straight train and I'm out here in these streets. Right. Um, I think it, it is going to be super pivotal though for uh for a lot of hairstylists to be able to like know both sides. Almost well, like, I, I have a lot of clients that come to me because of that, because one client she was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do silk press. I'm going to be on a silk press train. And I said, and it's, and it's okay. And when you're ready to come back to wash and go, we'll shift how we do things. But for now, we'll accommodate you in a silk press space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's, I'm, I think it's going to be key for, a you know, a hairstylist to, to, to code switch. Yeah. I think this is the form of code switching is, you know how to work with those who work with people who want to wear silk presses. Excuse me. Or, or natural or curls. Yes. Or twist or whatever you want to do. You're like, whatever you want to do, I'm here for you. So like, yes. um, but finding hairstylists like that is going to require you guys to do a lot of work. Now I will tell you, uh, Carlene is actually listed on our stylist directory, my stylist. So you guys can find her over there. But she is in New York City. She I'm in, does color. I'm in, I'm in Brooklyn now. Oh, you're in Brooklyn. I'm sorry. You yes, know. I was in the city. Well, you know, I as an outsider, I'm just like, it's all New York to me. It's, it's all one. <laughs> right. No, but she's in Brooklyn and she does do color and cuts. So y'all, I mean, y'all want some color. Her color, you've been killing the color over there, Carly. I've been seeing Thank you. I love it, but I'm a I'm a bit uh anal about color. So we have to do a, the test strand. I gotta make sure your foundation is right. So you just can't come in and book a Hi, a whole highlight session. I got to see how you take care of your hair. I got to see that your hair is good. I have to see if there's no ends. And I got, most importantly, got to see if you were using box color. But that's a whole other thing. We'll the, girl, the, girls, the girls' hair color do, do be looking, like the hair be looking good. So I already know that you. playing a game over there with them. Um, yeah. Now everybody can just walk in the door like, yes, color. Me. No, 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 no. We have to get acquainted. I don't even know you. Yeah. <laughs> Who, Who are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, like that's how hair color is. Like, have we met? That's right. that's, that's how. If it if they're not like, have we met? You you don't want to get the color. <laughs> if they don't do that and look you up and down, you all right. If, if looking you up and down, clutching up for us. Like, it's, have we it's, met? It's for your good. It's, it's for your for good. your own good. So thank you so much, Carlene. I hope You're that welcome. this was some perspective on hair cutting for y'all. Like, what to choose. How to choose it. And guess what? If you just, like Carlene said, like if you start out curly and you're like, you know what? I don't want no more curly cuts. I want to get, you know, I want to do this silk press or I'm moving over to twist outs. Um, being able to, again, work with somebody who can do that um, or make that move for you. Um, and knowing that this ain't every hairstylist. Some hairstylists literally only do curls and you got to respect and you gotta how that person works. But there are some people who do curls, who do silk presses, and will cut your hair blown out. Um, you have to find those folks who offer that. Because I'm telling you, the people who cut curly, that's it. 
<laughs> they like that's all I do. Um, and don't be upset because they don't offer something that you're, you know, that you're seeking. Uh, and again, you can find Carlene on my stylist. It's my style dash list.com. And I'll mm. be down at the bottom. I also put Carlene's uh, Instagram because, you know, I, I, like didn't. I didn't put it in there, but it's no, at I'm put it in the comments. Okay. I'm going to put your Instagram down there because I feel like they also watch Carlene's stories and you guys will get a good, good, <laughs> like, you know, I love your stories, Carlene. Thank I, you. I feel like, first of all, Carlene's real down, like down to earth, real easy, real classy. So I feel like, you know, they get a good sense of like your personality, like yes. in terms of working with you, uh, what that looks like. So I love that you do do those stories. So I'm like, okay. Yes. My community's over there. <laughs> yeah, you get over there. You're like, okay, okay, she might be my person. Um, and I feel like social media makes it a lot easier to get to know hairstylists before you book with them, yes. um, especially the ones that show up a certain way. So you guys will be able to find her there. If there's any other questions that you guys have about getting your natural haircut, uh, leave them down below. Um, and I'll definitely um, see if we can explore some more conversation around it. But I feel like this, this probably gives you guys a good, like, you know, a good, I guess, understanding because it's not a this versus this. It's what do you want to look like? Yes. And you have to feel pretty. You kind of feel pretty. And if it's not making you feel pretty, let's do something else. I mean, I've had conversations with clients. I'm like, not that they said it. I just felt something. I go, have you ever considered... Because sometimes they're looking for us to say it. They don't want to say it themselves. Mm -hmm. I find out a lot. They want, I'm like, I can't make the decision for you, but I do want you to feel pretty. I do. And it kind of opens up the conversation for them to say, well, you know, I don't, I'm like, you tried it. You know what your hair, I'm, I just want people to know what their hair looks like and sit with the fact that this is my hair. And then you can explore, but you won't know if you don't do it. Yeah, I love that. I think it is that simple. Do you feel pretty? I th and I really, I honest, like truly, like if it's not making you feel good, like let's get to the things that make you feel good because you don't yeah. have to your hair just because everybody else is doing it or it's trending. No, what's trending is trending for us personally is different from what's trending on a mass level. Yes. Listen, that bob that everybody bobbing ain't nothing new about that bob. There's nothing. I every I feel like everybody has had a bob. Everybody. But that's that's the thing you have to explain to clients too. Like everything is just it just it just recreates itself. It's nothing new. They just did one thing different, and boop, they put a name on it. Just like right. cowboy copper. <laughs> <laughs> I know here, Salas. I'm struggling with it. I know. I know y'all are struggling. I know y'all. <laughs> I've seen the I've seen the conversations online that the hairstylists are having around that, uh, but no, just again and the cut, like it's not really a cut; it's really just a look. It's a look. And what can we do with the hair that you bring to the salon? What do we have available to us, and what would the hair allow us to do? Because yeah. there's certain things. Shoot, there's things that I cannot do. My hair is just too. It's too dense for certain things. Um, I know you were like, no, nah, I don't believe you. It is. There are certain things I cannot, like I can't do. Even being a short hair is crazy oh. because it may be very dense natural. And it's, when we straighten it, it's no, it's no longer dense. My hair does. It's crazy. That. My hair does that. Like it literally straighten it. You'll be like, wait, where did it all? Where all our hair go? And then you're natural. You're like. You have a lot of hair. <laughs> right. You got to dig in there and see it, which is why when I do curl, if I do wear it straight, like I never wear it straight, like down, down, it's always curled. And I'm always like, and that's because your hair is like out. medium. It, it was very coarse. It would not do that. Yeah. Maybe. I like judging it up. Like, yeah. no, actually this front part's pretty coarse. Actually. Is it? <laughs> Oh, it's tripped out. This front part is super <laughs> tripped out. Uh, it's always tripped out in the front. So when I do wear it straight, um, like the back. So, what, so what's your hair? Is it is it is it coarse here, medium in the, in the middle? Like what? I know it's really, so it's coarse all over, and it's also mm -hmm. some silky smooth areas. Like okay. it's out, like mixed in. So mm -hmm. it's like it's ribboned in, which is okay. why I pull my hair back. Um, this area in the front 
it lays down fine. Like I could smooth my hair down. It's not even a big deal, but it's got to be wet. I okay. cannot smooth it dry. When we, and now that you're saying it, I'm analyzing your hair and I can see it from here. Yes. It, it, I cannot smooth this joint dry. I cannot unless unless it's silk pressed. OK. I can pull like pull it back, get it real smooth. Yeah. And trying to do like people you know, like folks want me to do like different hairstyles. First of all, like taking this hair and trying to do like, say, for instance, I try to do like um, I try to do like three buns. You know mm -hmm. how much work it requires for somebody like me to do. It's it's too much work. I, I'm just not going to do it. So my hairstyling really is super. I think I'm basic ish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll do a little <laughs> something, but right. it requires like pinning and, you know, I got to do two ponytails to do something to get like some people could just do in one ponytail. It's too exhausting um, right. to do that. And it's mo it's easier to work with my hair wet than it is to work with it dry and natural. I could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to. <laughs> could you imagine me taking this wash and go and trying to make two buns with it? No, ma'am. <laughs> Maybe down. But if you're trying to go up. N definitely not going up. And down is going to be a struggle. But if I do it wet, no problem. I can do anything. This hair, let me, I can do anything with this hair wet. The dry hair, like dry natural hair. I need a team of people <laughs> to get back there and get to work. And even then, I'm tender headed. So we all got to go to the shampoo bowl together and start. Oh, are you tender headed? I'm tender headed. Oh, okay. oh, oh. You work on my hair wet, or we stretch my hair out, or we press it out. And actually, it'd be easier to work with pressed, honestly. Okay. A good blow dry. I can do a good blow dry because we can do a lot of fun things with my good blown out hair. I love yeah. blown hair. I love it. Yes. Um, yes. A lot of fun things with my hair um, blown out. Because I was, you know, I did that Bantu knot. That was mine. I was like, okay, I like these Bantu knots. Yes, yes. yes. I love those. Um, so that that's my, you got me a Bantu knot. You ain't got to see me do a twist. I ain't really got to like. But when you do the Bantu knot, they have to be blown out. It best. Okay. Best. I find a lot of clients I do a blow now and I do a twist. And for them, they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Because you have, because because they're so caught up in the hair being elongated. I'm like, you have more movement and more elongation, especially if your hair's thick. It's not going to just clump up and be here. It's able to come down and you're able to like move it around. That and you get that smooth. It's, and there's nothing wrong with that smoothness. I think that's something that we kind of miss from being relaxed. Uh, because I feel like the blown out hair that we then style into something like a bantu knot or a twist gets that smooth-ish look from like a smooth ish look. Correct. Yeah, it's not exactly straight, but it's not what I, what, it's not what it's giving all the time. It's no. Change. It's giving me 80s, like yes. 80s uh, roller set hair. I feel like yes. that's like our roller set. Fluffy here. Fluffy movement. Yes. Not yes. the movement with the wash and go, but like there's just only so much because it's it's more like because it's crinkly. But sometimes yes. you don't be crinkly. You just want to be kind of like smooth. Yes, and free. And free. Yeah. So I like again, I am all like all for that. But again, doing things again, I love just making it that simple. Just like, do you feel pretty? <laughs> Do you feel pretty? And you don't have to do anything. You know what I'm You don't have to stay in one place. Right. If you don't want to. If you decide, like we said earlier, to, to switch things up, change it out. You want to like spend your whole winter with a smooth blowout or mm -hmm. a silk press winter. Mm -hmm. So you choose. Just know, like, you know, we're going to have to put in some work to get back to the other side. And so you yes. choose. <laughs> we're work, working on that medium hair, a medium of hair, and we're doing things to that medium of hair to keep that going. But once we switch to something else, we got to switch up the care. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because we we're using oils on silk press and just know that your curls are not going to be as defined when you do go to the wash and go because we were doing stuff that we weren't supposed to in the wash and go world. Right. We did what we needed for that style because of my hair. Right. Correct. But it's gonna take a toll on the wash and go. It's gonna take four. I say any. It's gonna take you about eight, eight 
eight to 10 weeks to see it go back to, or, you know, to revert back to what you normally see. Cause I remember when I did, I, so I did this past fall, I blow dry my hair literally every week, which is not a great idea for me mm -hmm. every week. I could probably okay. do every two to three weeks, but every, I blow dry my hair for four weeks straight. So mm -hmm. awful idea. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. My hair was like, as, as coarse as it is. It was like, no, no. Right. And so when I went back to my wash and go, I remember um, posting uh, photos and somebody was like, oh, my God, I like, can't believe your hair looks like that. And I was like explained in the caption that mm -hmm. I it out. This is what happens when you blow your hair out. Oh, what happened? It took a while for the curls to bounce back. It did. Like this area here where, you know, I'm the loosest. So I'm the loosest here. And also this hair is a little bit smoothish. Mm -hmm. it's, it's coarse, but it. I don't know. It's just different in this area here. This hair is actually my, this is the hair that is the most fragile. Okay. This and, and, and that's true. I found that most, most naturals, the front is a wild card. It could be coarse or it can be loose. The middle is a whole nother, another, <laughs> another being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the back is the curls, the perfect curls that we'll never see. The, the ones that see. we want to take and do like this with. People just want to take that hair and go like this. but it, Nobody see those curls, but they're beautiful back there. They're beautiful and back perfect. there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, so most of the damage when it happens when people have heat damage is the front because the front is looser. So it takes more of a toll. Whereas here we have more of a bounce back than your front. That front be tore up. So yeah, my front was kind of tore up. Um, Did you have to scrunch it and stuff like to get it back? Well, it was a little beat up too on the ends. I had um, some a lot of scraggles because this loose hair too, um, it, with it, it's fragile and it's looser, um, mm -hmm. easily impacted by the heat. Okay. So then I use, and then I change dryer. So one week I use the Dyson, another week I use that Kiss dryer. So I was like, mm -hmm. nah, I'm gonna stick with my Dyson. Use because <laughs> uh, the trick that Carlisa showed me was she starts out with the um, high speed, low heat when she starts mm -hmm. dry, and at the end she turns the heat up. Um, with not too many passes, which I thought was a cool little tip um, to turn the heat up. Because I also noticed like when you turn the heat up, that also changes how the hair feels, meaning how smooth you get that cuticle. And I mm -hmm. can when you use low heat on. No, nah, that's not for these cuticles. This cuticle need a high heat to get it to smooth down. Uh, so while people are doing all this, y'all doing that tension method, that's not helping to smooth them cuticles down. I, that's why I love using a paddle brush. I mean, I'm I'm not a comb attachment person. I'm a paddle brush because you're just yeah. using the tension and you're just gliding it down without doing too much work as well. Yeah. Well, that's hard for you. To, well, I would say it's hard for me to do on myself. Definitely easy. It's, it's great for the front. I don't know how you're going to do the back. That's, that, that's the thing. No way. Yeah. So I just use the comb attachment. <laughs> the nice one's not too bad. Like, it's not mm -hmm. a bad and, and actually, when if you part the section of hair properly, and do all small sections, that comb attachment never came off. Okay, great. And, and that's key, small, small sections for small, your hair. Yes, they have to be small. So if you have four sections, I got to break the sections down probably into three to finish yes. it out. But turning the heat on low, starting out to get it, blow off most of that water, and then coming in with that higher heat at the end, that was perfect. Okay. That was Perfect. I got a nice, good stretch. And another thing I think people don't realize, like they want to do these blowouts. Y'all need some hairspray. Y'all got to have hairspray. Once the hair is At blown, what point? At what point? After you after you blow it. It mm -hmm. needs spray with hairspray to keep it from starting to shrink up so fast. Dry hairspray and flexible whole hairspray. Because flexible. if it's wet, yes. it's going to... It's gonna revert. No, that yeah. um, you know they keep changing hairsprays. I know I had one from Reckon that they no longer sell, but I think they repackage it. <laughs> I don't know what they repackage it to. I've been using Aveda hairspray since the nineties. What? And I have not reverted. It's it's the driest hairspray and it's flexible. And if you go back with heat, it'll lock. It'll, it'll give you that same hold. What? Which one is Aveda? Which one? Tell us. <laughs> Aveda Air Control. Okay, we now we got a new hairspray to add to the list. I know people like the um, Kenra. Kenra's uh -huh. good too, because I have Kenra on backup. Okay, so Kenra, yeah. I think it was the 25. Yes, 
I don't yep. remember. I just know it's silver. Well, but, Kimber uh, has multiple uh, strengths. Oh, I didn't know. Yes, I uh, have the. I know I have the flexible. I got it from like one of those um, one of those uh, goodie bags, and okay. I've been so I grab it when I go to Cosmoprof, um, or one of the, the hair supplies. Yeah. I, I grab it for as as a backup only, so I don't use yeah. it much. But you're right about it. Have it not being a wet spray. It needs to be like a aerosol. Like yes, it gotta be in a like, and you you blow dry it. You spray it, the hair is not finna shrink. <laughs> it's not going to shrink. Y'all blow y'all hair out and then y'all go outside and their hair string. I'm like, y'all didn't have no hairspray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> y'all didn't have no hairspray. And very light and far because telling me you spray, I get scared. But um, yeah, so yeah, far like, away, not like this. Yeah, like here. I'm you know, you know what I did? So I actually did, I did a couple of things with those Bantu knots, but I actually did a set of Bantu knots with hairspray. Okay. So After I you Bantu and then you spray down? I no, I sprayed it. Mm -hmm. Um I brushed the spray through the hair and then I Bantu knotted it up. You need to do a tutorial to show them how to do it. So there's <laughs> oh I, I, I did you, that one. You scared me because I, I just get scared because of the one. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh no. no, no. Out of no, no, no. So I use a very, like, again, dryish hairspray. Spray mm -hmm. the hair. Not for you, just for oh. the average oh, person. The average because they'll, they'll go ham on the spray. And then. Yeah, I, did, I didn't go too crazy. But then I had to commit to doing it every day, though. And that was the problem. Because yeah. I had to keep spraying it. And after a while, hairspray just starts to smell funny on your hair. Mm -hmm. And then it gets itchy. So, I mean, mm -hmm. not terrible. Like if you had something and you needed to be somewhere, you, you just needed to do that quick. And some people don't have the elasticity to, to handle it. True. No, I probably didn't either, but <laughs> <laughs> I did go back. I did go back and I did it with, um, I did it with foam. Okay. That's better. Yeah, yes. It's actually really good. But then okay. you, know, you still have to commit to the Bantu knot. You got to do it every few days or something. But either way, there's options, y'all. And we don't have to just do this one thing all the time. But you, again, do things that make you feel pretty. Also, that align with your lifestyle mostly. Um, thank you so much to Carlene. And thank you for that hairspray. Because, look, we, I, you know, we never have enough products to know mm -hmm. about. Because I don't I know love everything it. either. I, so. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> What was it? It was a beta. A beta, a beta air control. Air control. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna yes. give and, don't, and don't go using a whole bunch. But next thing you know, I can't find it. <laughs> well, please, Carly, some air control, y'all. Don't steal it. Leave all. me some, especially New York, please. <laughs> uh, again, if you guys have any questions um, that you feel like we didn't address or things you want to know about in terms of um, haircuts or cutting your natural hair, uh, but don't get too tied up into like the techniques that you guys are seeing. These are just. Um, tools that hairdressers are using they are not specific haircuts i let me also say that because i didn't say it earlier all these different haircut names you hear they're, they're just techniques um, for uh education that those educators are using to educate other hairstylists who are out there working behind their chairs so you all have a great day um and we'll see you at the next black girl curls podcast Thank you. Thanks for having me, Aisha. You're welcome. <laughs>